Welcome back to another video. I'm really excited about this one. Today we're going to break down a really cool effect I did in my previous video where I made shoes float. If you haven't seen the project yet, I'm going to link it right here. Go check it out. So for this effect, it's actually pretty easy. You don't need too many materials to achieve it. First thing you need is some sort of string. I use the fishing line because it's very durable and it's able to hold a lot of weight, but it's also very thin and very translucent. So it's a lot easier to get rid of it in post. The next thing you need is some sort of cutting utensil. I used an X-Acto knife, but you can use scissors or anything else that can cut through the string. The third thing you need is some sort of way to attach the string. I used the hook with a screw end because I have an unfinished basement and I'm able to just screw it into the beams and then attach the string to it. Now all these things are not really hard to get your hands on, you're able to get them in a local hardware store. To begin the process of making your subject float, all you're going to do is tie one end of the string to the subject and the other end of the string to your mounting system, whether that's a hook or a beam or something else. Then you take your camera and you get your desired shots. I'm gonna use some of the shots from the video I made the other day. And then when you're done, all you wanna do is put it in your computer and open an After Effects project. So now that we're in After Effects, first thing you wanna do is import your footage. So right click in the Projects tab, click Import, File, and then find your files wherever they're located. So now that we've imported our footage, first thing you wanna do is create a new composition. The easiest way to do so is to take your clip that you wanna use and drag it to the new composition window. What that will do is automatically create a sequence with the specs of that clip. Now for the purpose of the breakdown, the first shot that I chose is just a stationary shot of the shoes in the air. What you're gonna to wanna to do is select your clip, go to your effects tab. If you can't find your effects and presets tab, all you have to do is go to window and turn on effects and presets. As soon as you have that tab, all you have to do is go to the search bar and search simple wire removal, and it should pop up. All you have to do is drag it on top of your clip. As soon as you drag it, it's gonna pop up in your effects controls tab on the left. You'll see that it has a point A and a point B anchor. First thing you wanna do is zoom in a bit, take point A, put it at one end, and then take point B, and put it at the other end. Now right away, this usually won't do much, but if you take a look without adjusting anything, when you move that around, you can see that it's starting to get rid of that wire. So you wanna line it up as closely as possible to the wire, zoom in more if you have to, and it's already starting to disappear. Now the next thing you wanna do is increase the thickness of the mask. I found 10 to be a pretty good number for how thin the wires are, and it typically does the job right away, as you can see. Now if you take a look, you can still see a bit of white down here where the shoe is. All you have to do is take point A, extend the mask. If that still doesn't work, that's when we have to go to the slope and mirror blend. So what the slope is, is if you take a look, at zero, there's no mask. As you start adding the slope, it gets rid of things, but when you go too far, you can see that it actually creates a distortion. I find a good spot for the slope typically is 75 because it gives a pretty detailed mask, but it doesn't distort too much. What the mirror blend is, is how much it mirrors from the center point of where the mask is and creates texture around it to mask it out. Found that a really good number for it is 45. It tends to smooth out that middle masking line very nicely. And all we have to do is now duplicate that other effect on all the other strings. And there you go, just like that, it gets rid of the strings and you have a floating shoe. Once again, that was an example with a stationary shot where all you really have to do is place point A and point B. This next example, we're gonna use a little bit more of a complicated shot where I'm actually moving the camera and the string isn't in one position, where you actually have to track the effect. Same as last time, the first thing you wanna do is take your desired shot and create a new sequence with it. Let's play back the shot so you can see what I meant when I said it's a little bit more complicated this time. As you can see, the wire is moving throughout this frame. It's not that much more complicated, so let's get right to it. You're still gonna wanna search up the same effect, simple wire removal. It will pop up again, you drag it onto your clip, you set your point A, and you set your point B. We'll change the thickness to 10. So in this case, 10 is not thick enough, so we will have to go to a greater amount, 45, 
We've set the mask to cover the wire. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you're on your first frame in the timeline because you're going to be creating keyframes. By clicking these two stopwatches on point A and point B, what that essentially does is now every time you move point A or point B, it will create a new keyframe, creating a new position for it that will track throughout the composition. To see where those keyframes are, you simply go to your timeline, click on your clip and click U on your keyboard. What that will do is show you your keyframes. What you're going to want to do is take your time indicator and skip a few frames and adjust the mask accordingly. Skip a few frames and then adjust the mask accordingly and keep doing that until you have completed the entire timeline. When you're done setting your last keyframe, what you want to go do is then rewatch it because sometimes when you skip this many frames, it doesn't track properly and you're going to have to adjust it. This part did not work perfectly. So what we want to do is find the center point and adjust it accordingly. So just a reminder, what I'm doing is going frame by frame now and making sure that the mask is properly placed throughout the entire composition. Playing back the shot, you can see that it gets rid of the wire. Something I want to mention is that this is the fast and simple way of getting rid of wires. Sometimes it doesn't work perfectly on every shot, especially when you have a lot of details in the shot because it starts distorting it and creating a weird mask. Now there is another way of doing it, but it's a little bit more complicated and takes a lot more time. Let me know in the comments and I can make that in another video. Thanks for watching. I really hope you took something away from this one. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to click that subscribe button and the notification button to get notified when the next video comes out. See you on the next one.